Hello, everyone. Welcome to the first lecture on machine learning with financial applications. So in the first video, I would like to cover uh, the overall topic about what is machine learning, what are the type of uh, algorithms we are usually dealing with, and what are the common applications. So let's uh, start with the question, what is machine learning? Right. So uh, I would like to think of machine learning as a black box, right? So let's first think of this as a black box and this is called ML. So uh, to understand what a black box is, usually we, we start with the inputs and outputs, right? So we have the input here, uh, these are inputs, which will receive some data of certain formats, right? It could be an image, could be a piece of text, it could be a, a tabular data, right? and uh, it outputs something, right? So these outputs is usually uh, um, optional, but in the context of machine learning, we would expect the model to predict something, right? So this is uh, also called prediction, um, prediction, which we expect the model to give us uh, some sort of prediction for the given input data, right? So this is input data. Now, this piece of chunk is a black box, right? So we talk about it, it's a black box and we are going to uh, train this algorithm inside the black box so that it performs well in terms of the current prediction task, right? So there are different names for this black box. We can call it an algorithm and we can also call it a model. Right? And uh, no matter what you call it, it is essentially a function. Right. So a function is a very general concept that accepts certain inputs and uh, generates certain outputs. All right, so this is the basic setup. And uh, uh, so, so having this framework uh, is, is very important because when we look at different uh, algorithms in details, it, is, it really helps to gen uh, generalize the thinking in terms of what is inputs, what is outputs, um, and what does the current function do? So we, have, we may have different functions at different levels, so they may in, embed each other. And then, but usually each function has a specific purpose. And in this case, each model has a specific purpose, right? So we would expect a model to, uh, to uh, receive some data and uh, generate some outputs, right? So this is the basic that we, we have. Um, so let's... Uh, let me look at uh, the, okay. So there are other uh, different types of uh, uh, algorithms. Now, uh, so, so, so let's look at the, the domain of the machine learning. So say this is our machine learning space. We have different algorithms here. Some do the supervised learning, some do unsupervised learning, which we'll talk about later. And then uh, this is the space of ML, right? It's a very uh, hot, uh, uh, area and uh, lots of uh, investments and research going on in this, in this space. So ML is only under the big brother, uh, bigger umbrella of AI, uh, artificial intelligence, right? So this is uh, even a bigger pursuit where we try to uh, develop machines, develop robots to replicate, right? To mimic human behaviors in terms of the reasoning skills, how we behave, right? So this is a uh, much, uh, a uh, bigger task. Now, ML is more about building uh, models that can uh, find the patterns from data, right? So it's more about learning from the data. So data is very important, right? So if you have, if you do not have enough data, then it's very difficult to build a good performing model. <clears throat> All right. So, um, so we also heard, heard terms like deep learning, right? So I just showed hand deep learning DL. Now, deep learning is a very specific uh, subdomain of uh, of uh, machine learning, right? So it specifically involves the use of neural networks to build a model, right? So uh, different models may use different tools, but deep learning, they use neural networks. So this is like a subdomain, right? A subfield. And then we also uh, uh, hear something about uh, uh, reinforced learning, right? So, so let me just... Uh, uh, supervised learning, unsupervised learning. So these three are the three um, different types of machine learning algorithms, which I'll talk about later. But for now, it's good to think of uh, an algorithm belonging to either 
uh, one type of these uh, three domains, right? So supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and reinforced learning. So this is the most common task we will usually uh, we will spend a lot of time on. This is uh, very difficult to do, right? So it's more advanced. And this is uh, growing very fast in terms of uh, research and attention, right? Um, so the reason I'm joining here is because I like to highlight a very uh, exciting area, which is the interaction versus two uh, of these two fields. So there's interaction between deep learning and reinforced learning, uh, which uh, is, is uh, which coined the term uh, deep reinforced learning. Right? So so we we'll, we'll spend a bit of time on this. Uh, specifically, we'll talk about how to do a portfolio portfolio optimization, right? Optimization uh, using reinforcement learning. So uh, this is a very good combination between uh, reinforcement learning and a typical financial application, which is to uh, how to, uh, to to analyze how to allocate the portfolio weights. Right, so but this is uh, towards the end of this uh, whole course, and we we again we start from the basics. Um, okay. Now, there's also another term called data science, right? So it's uh, actually spanning across different domains we have, and there's different overlap. So it's just way how we characterize uh, the the class of algorithms we're dealing with, right? So some of these are uh, is sort of quite uh, evolving fast, so it may not be. Uh, quite accurate to see these are the only three type of learning uh, uh, paradigms. Okay, so let's look at the different type of uh, machine learning algorithms. So just want to talk about uh, supervised learning, right? Supervised uh, learning. And we also have unsupervised learning. And we have uh, reinforced learning. Reinforce and learning. Okay, so bear my writings. Um, okay, so now let's look at the first one, supervised learning. Um, so the, the term supervised really means that we have supervision in the task we are dealing with, right? So just we'll talk about the data, which is very important, right? So the data will come in different forms. So data is here. <clears throat> so usually in supervised learning, the data will come in pairs, which means X and Y, right? So X is our input and uh, Y is our output, right? So uh, and uh, so, so examples could be, this is a image, so X is image and Y is the label of the image, whether it's a cat or a dog, right? And our model, which we can denote, which we can denote as F, right? So F is a model that we will do the prediction, right? So we will try to, uh, use the model f, right? It will receive an input x, so write it as f of x, right? And we and it will be uh, our prediction. So this is our prediction, and we we try to make an accurate prediction. Uh, prediction. So by accurate, we mean that this prediction will stay very close to uh, the true label here y, right? So if it's a cat image, then the prediction using the model uh, will better be a cat, right? So that's uh, so sometimes we denote the prediction as a uh, wet hat, which means that this is a predicted value, this is a true value, and we want to minimize the distance between the wet hats and the y. Uh, so that's the, the intuition we have. And uh, so just one point to note here is that this y here is very expensive, right? So we would have humans, human labelers to sit in front of the laptop. Uh, and look at each image and assign the label, right? So we have to create this label first before we train the model, right? So to train this model F, that's that's a costly, and uh, that's uh, relatively the easiest uh, in terms of the the three uh, type of uh, algorithm, uh, type of machine learning models, right? So machine learning, uh, so supervised learning is very expensive because we need to create the label Y, but once we create the label. Um, as long as the model is complex enough, right? Usually we can expect uh, a, a decent, uh, decently accurate uh, model to be developed, All right? So that's uh, the, the data which comes in the form of pairs, input, outputs. So unsupervised learning, uh, as the name suggests, there's no supervision, right? So the data comes only in the form of X itself. So what does that mean? Assume X is, uh, is uh, for example, the attributes of customers, right? So each 
uh, dots represents a customer. And a typical application of supervised uh, unsupervised learning is that try to, is it, it tries to find the pattern in the data. So for example, I can say this could be two groups of customers, right? Then therefore I can perform clustering uh, to segment my customers into two different groups. So I can do uh, targeted marketing and so on, right? So uh, this is uh, more difficult because we are trying to dig something that's uh, that's consistent, that re represents consistent patterns from data, right? There's no supervision, there's no why here. All right, so, but if we know how uh, X is being uh, sort of generated, if we know the underlying distribution for X, then the, the problem is solved, right? So if we know how X is being generated, then we can do a lot of things, including prediction. So. Uh, unsupervised learning is is more difficult, but once we can do it well, then we can uh, easily do other downstream tasks, right? Okay, so reinforced learning is sort of in the middle between the two, uh, but the the uh, the data comes a bit different. So the data comes in the in the form of X and R, right? So what is this R here? R represents our reward, right? So shorthand for reward, meaning uh, once we have the, the inputs, X, so this X is still our inputs. Um, now R is our reward uh, from the environment. So the environment is, is, the, is the learning environment we are currently uh, living in. Right? So for example, if uh, say X is the, uh, so say you want to train a self-driving car, right? And uh, X is our uh, vision from the camera. So we see the pictures, uh, in front of car, right? And R is our reward, meaning uh, did we bump into the road, right? Into the uh, in the uh, curves of the road or did we uh, drive smoothly without bumping into things, All right? So uh, now R directly comes from the environment because it's, it's not uh, 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 from the human who are looking at the image, it's from the environment. If there's a, a if there's, for example, an accident bumping into an object, then there's a negative reward, which is something we can set. But if it drives smoothly, then it can uh, it represents a positive reward. Right? So this reward comes from the environment. Uh, it's sort of uh, like uh, getting signals, getting feedback from the environment and learning from the feedback. Right. So we still have X, but in this case, we do not have Y because it's expensive. But in this case, we have R. R is something we can directly get from the, the overall uh, outside environment, right? So um, we're still trying to build a model, F. Now with F, we can say, uh, based on what we look at, we can uh, predict the next uh, uh, action. So in this case, it's, we're not using uh, X or R, we're using action. Action is basically the action uh, the the self driving car will take what is to uh, to turn left, turn right, or going straight, right? So this will be action, um, and uh, and that's the overall setup. All right. So now I would like to take some time to also discuss the model training uh, workflow. So uh, we'll uh, focus on the supervised learning uh, setting, right? So where we have the x and the y uh, as our inputs. All right, so this is our data. This is our specifically our training data. Training data, which is here, right? So we have a training data. And as we mentioned, we try to view everything as a function, right? So this, in this case, we have the data and we want to pass into the model. So this is our second chunk, which is what, which is what, we're, what we're trying to build, right? So once we have a model, then we can do prediction. So the model, receives the training data as inputs and outputs, uh, prediction, right? Prediction. So I want to be more specific here because now training data, it includes the X and the Y, right? So it has two, two things, X and Y. Um, to be more specific, this should not come from X and Y. We only look at X here, right? Because now a model, uh, what it receives the the input x, it does not receive the 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 output itself. If it receives, then the the task would be considered done, right? Because we already know the the target, the prediction, um, the true uh, targets, right? So x is the inputs for our model f. So we have f, 
as a with the input x, and we generate a prediction which is y hat. All right. So this is the input and output from the model's perspective. Now, if we abstract ourselves and look at how we train the model, right? So we train the model by minimizing the distance between these two guys, right? Y hat and y. So in this case, our input will be y hat and y, right? So these are the two inputs here. And this will generate what you call the cost or distance, right? So it's a measure of uh, how well we are doing, right? So we want to minimize the cost. And the cost could, could be usually we take the root means, uh, for example, the root mean square root or the mean square error, which is just our their distance and square out, right? So this is an uh, informal way of writing, but if we want to be more specific, we'll take the auto norm square out, right? And then uh, we take the, 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 the average. All right, so uh, so essentially, this is a cost metric that tells us how well the current prediction is, right? How well the model is doing. So this is viewing from the, the overall training perspective, right? So we have the cost. Now, remember that we want to, uh, to uh, improve the model so that the cost is minimized. So now, now cost becomes an input to the model, right? Uh, and uh, let me... Uh, let me just have something in the middle, so which is called optimization. Optimization. So if we view the optimization as a as a chunk, as a block, right? So we pass in the cost as a signal. So it it tells the optimization block to say how well or how bad we are doing in terms of current prediction. Now the optimization block we all, which we can also call the optimizer right optimizer we'll take the input the signal and the cost and then uh output is to to come up with a new model so which is to to uh, change the weights here so model uh, uh so now this is will be a new model right new model which we just pass in here and then so this completes one sort of round of iteration Right, so this is a new model. Now, for a new model again, we receive the 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 new inputs x. It could be the same inputs would be the new input x, and then again with prediction, when we have the cost, then it will iterate. So this is an iterative training loop, right? Iterative training loop. All right. So um, let me just spend one more minute to to uh, on this slide because uh, I want to expand this model here. So model here includes two two things. One is the parameters. Parameters, one is the architecture. All right, so when we talk about, when we talk about the model, a model consists of these two things because uh, first they have they need, they need to have parameters, right? So uh, for example, the, the one of the biggest models which is very popular nowadays is called ChatGPT. So ChatGPT has over uh, 175 billion parameters. So this is a huge uh, space of parameters, right? So, and these are the tuning knobs that can make the model very flexible and thus very powerful, right? So the more parameters we have, uh, the more powerful the model will be, right? So parameters is just uh, a number that can take on any value. Right? For, for example, first parameter could be 1.1, second parameter could be 1.2, etc. right? So uh, we will just denote as W. Right, so W is, represents our set of parameters. Architecture means that uh, how the the widths are being uh, structured, are being ar arranged, right? So uh, it basically tells us uh, now we have, uh, for example, we have X, right? So X is our input. And if for the simplest model, we can say it is a pure linear model. We can say X times W uh, equals my Y hat, right? So my Y hat is generated by multiplying the input X with the parameter x uh, w, so this is our architecture. Basically, specifies uh, how the information flows, right? Okay, so I can have another model. So this is my uh, f one f one model f two model, which is second model could be uh, x uh, squared and times w, right? And now uh, the third model could be x times w squared, right? So all these are different choices of models, and this concerns the choice of the architecture. So 
So the model needs to have two these these two components, the parameters and the architecture, so that uh, so that we know how to make a prediction, right? So for example, we build a model uh, is can recognize faces in your iPhone. Now this model is a physical, a not so physical, but it's a, it's it's an object, it's a file that's stored on your phone, and uh, it's it consists of these two things, right? So the parameters and the architecture that defines how the information should flow from the input to the output. All right, so now we can do something here because uh, this is no longer, uh, okay, still point to the model, but specifically, usually we point to the parameters. So I say, uh, if if W has uh, many parameters, maybe W1, W2, da, 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 W10. Now this runs original value could be 0 0.8, 0 0.7. Now, optimizer says that, oh, because the cost is very big, now I want to change W1 to maybe 0 0.7, this one to 0 0.6, right? So this is essentially how the model is being trained. So training the model essentially means that we are fine-tuning the weights. So these are the weights that we're, we are trying to tune, and the optimal set of weights are the ones that uh, minimize the cost. So we want the cost to go to the minimum, by changing the weights. Architecture-wise, we usually stay as fixed, but uh, in advance. So, but this is also another parameter we can tune to say, uh, I want to test architecture one versus architecture two uh, and, and see which one performs best uh, when they have the minimum cost. All right, so that's the, the uh, in a nutshell, what model training workflow uh, looks like. All right, so um, I give a example on, on the unsupervised learning. Essentially, for example, we have uh, different points here. Now, this is something you can do uh, via clustering. So clustering means that we can have three classes. It helps us to do uh, customer, segment, customer segmentation or social network analysis, right? So these are the, the common applications. Uh, again, we try to find the data just from the data from the pattern from the data itself. So this is just purely X. All right. So now last we have the reinforcer learning. Uh, so here I'm just going giving the overall overall framework uh, in terms of how things are, are run. Right. And uh, so for example we have the environments, which is what the camera sees, right? It sees everything. It comes in the form of image. So now uh, now the next block is we usually have something called agents. So agents is represents the model, right? Uh, and uh, let's look at what is the input and output for, for these two. So the agents receives, uh, so the agent is our model. It needs to receive the the image, right? So if you see the image, and uh, usually we do not use the, because image is very specific, usually we use the word uh, state. Right, so state means um, the state of the environment, like the image it sees, the current temperature of the room, etc. Right, so everything can we can put in a state. Um, so it receives states and it makes an action. Right, so this is action. Decides whether to turn left, turn right, or continue to drive. Right, so this is action that changes outputs to of the agents and the state is the input to the agents. Right. Now, based on this, so there's a loop here. So action goes to the environment and there's a loop here, right? So what it means is that for the environment, which is not something we are we can control. So we can only control the agents. The environment uh, receives an action, right? So for example, we drive, we turn left, but then uh, the environment uh, would, would bring us to a next state, right? So because we turn left, then we have a new set of uh, states. We have a new set of images we're seeing through the camera, right? So we have a new new state. Now, so this is becomes an iterative loop. But however, we have something new here, which is called reward, right? Reward says that um, besides the new uh, images you are seeing, we also have the reward, reward to tell us, do we do we bump into the roads or, or are we uh, driving uh, uh, as usual, right? So this can be uh, in the form of a scalar value, could be one, could be two, could be negative 10, et cetera, right? So, these two um, represents the inputs to the, uh, so this also goes to the agents. So the agent looks at the states uh, of the environments and also the reward, because we need to know the reward to adjust our 
behaviors, right? So we want to maximize our reward, uh, uh, and uh, and so that we we uh, intelligently adjust the, the action itself. So this is something you want to to train. Uh, so this is the, the focus. We want to train the agent such that we maximize the, uh, the rewards and uh, by uh, carefully adjusting our actions, right? So this is how the input output is mapped in the framework of reinforcer learning, right? Okay, so I think that's it for uh, the overall introduction and I hope you find it uh, useful. Uh, and thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.